We are live. <laughs> oh, What's going on, guys? How y'all doing today? Oh, real good, man. What's going on, fellas? It's Ooh. been a long time. It's been six whole days. Here the fuck we are. Right. Here oh. the fuck yeah. we are. Yes, we <laughs> how are. the hell did That's we get here again? <laughs> I don't know how this happens every week, man. Oh, shit. I got the... Uh... What's going on, guys? How y'all? I feel yeah. like I'm just... Wa- I walk down the hallway and I end up sitting here in front of a, you know my computer every Sunday. And right. I happen to see you guys. Hey, what are you guys doing on my computer? <laughs> what the fuck do I know you, you guys You're your damn assholes. <laughs> Didn't I go to high school with you? <laughs> <laughs> Me? No, guys, I'm way too young. I got to tell you, I am really psyched to talk about Destiny. Like, I'm really psyched to talk about Destiny. So, before I get into it, because I'm going to go off. <laughs> I want to I hear, yeah. All right, I'm going to go off. But I want to hear what you guys have been playing first. All right, well, I'll make it short and sweet. I've been playing Rise of the Tomb Raider on my PC. Uh, this is something that I have never really gotten into, you know, trying full AAA experiences like that on the PC. Uh, but let me just say this. This game graphically and the way that's presented and the, the way the story is being presented and the characters and the voice acting, it's some of the best quality that I've seen in the genre. And I would say at least on my PC, I'm able to play it on very high. As long as I'm not trying to capture it at the same time, it works fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've never really seen anything like this kind of, you know, it, the clarity, the resolution is really unbelievable. My, my laptop has a 4K display. Mm-hmm. And I even took it to work uh, Friday and showed it, you know, to a few coworkers, you know, getting ready to walk out the door. I want them to see what it looked like. And it's fucking unbelievable the are way you, this game Are looks. you running it natively at 4K? Well, no, I'm running it at 19, 1920 by 1080p, but... Even on that setting, my, my monitor is still 4K, so you're going to get a little bit crisper of an image than you would on a traditional 1080p by uh, a 1920 by 1080p display. But it's fucking unbelievable. I mean, the characters, the, the voice acting, the way the story is progressing, you know, the stuff that you run into in the wild, I just love it. I think it's unbelievable. And, of course, I've been playing that game from way back in the day. I'm talking about 227 Overwatch, okay? <laughs> I still haven't been playing Overwatch. People still uh, play that? Hell yeah, they play it. But people play still play game? Destiny. Yeah. People still play that game? What? And, and, and I've, I've gotten a few games. I even got my wife in with me this weekend. We played some The Last of Us. And that, that I'm sorry, guys. That's my that's my Destiny, Brian. Right, that Last is the game that, that never, it'll never get old. It'll never get stale. It'll never feel dated. It'll never feel tired. To me, every single time I play that game, it feels fucking brand new. And it's a very tight When do community. you think we're going to get Last of Us 2? Oh God! I mean, to be <laughs> to be totally truthful, I think we're probably going to end up hearing about that sometime mid twenty seventeen, and it might be a um, uh, twenty eighteen release, you know, late twenty eighteen. Uh, if they want to keep up the same the same. When did pedigree. we hear about Uncharted four f- for the first time? Did we hear about it in twenty fifteen at E three, and then they released it? Uh, no, no. E three twenty fourteen was when it was announced. It was, was teased when, was when the PS four launched. And I it actually came out. That. It was teased in 2014. Did they show it no, at E3 2015? If, if it was teased yeah. during the PlayStation's you know, initial release, that was 2013. 2013. Yeah. yeah. So, and it came out. So, it could still be another three, four years before we see it. I, you know what? <laughs> I, 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 just, I just had a really good conversation with a group of guys. We were all playing uh, The Last of Us Online together. Yep. And I, I told them this, and they kind of agreed. I'm good with it the way it is until something new comes along. You know, the thing that Naughty Dog has kind of mastered, they are the masters at. You know, they have a particular pedigree and and there's a particular style and and quality to their games, including their multiplayer games. My wife was just playing Uncharted 4's multiplayer. It's like what they do, they're really, really grand at it. And I'm fine playing that until, you know, they create something bigger and better, which might not even be uh, The Last of Us game. But the day that those servers go dead, a part of me will die on the inside. Right. Oh. The, oh, I'm telling the truth. Uh, Overwatch is a very, very fun game. I don't know if it'll if it has that kind of staying power for me that The Last of Us has. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's tons of replayability in it. You learn all these new characters. There's still characters I haven't played with because you you begin to have an affinity towards what you consider favorites. Yeah, but it's almost that's like a fighting the, game where you got to like learn a character and then learn what the other characters do, and then you kind of move on and expand your knowledge. That's, that that's the, thing. The, the thing with me and, and Overwatch is going into a game and, and all of a sudden you and your team are getting your asses handed to you. You got to look at how you're losing 
what characters are doing what, and then you can decide on the fly what you can do to counteract that yeah. ass kickery. So it's really, uh, it's like chess. It's it's a very, very involved game. It takes a lot of thinking on the fly. What can you do to help your team and hurt the other team? It's an awesome game. I'm really shocked that Blizzard came out and kind of took this huge chunk, mindshare of console gamers with Overwatch. To me, it's an amazing game. I really, really love it. And I'm going to continue to play uh, this this Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I'll get back to you guys. Hopefully, I can have that beaten sometime this week and uh, do a quick review on it. But playing it on the PC is a different kind of experience. I mean, I've heard you, Briar, and, and other guys say, man, playing on the PC is better than console. I've never seen anything on PS4 that looks like this, and that's just being totally honest. It just The way that it moves, the lighting effects, is something kind of magical about it. I'm just very pleased to actually have a PC that can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More so than anything else. Now, I, I saw some guy live streaming this week. Some game that came out like in 2003. And, I mean, he was having a fucking blast. <laughs> you guys might know him. I actually subscribe to this guy. I don't do that to anybody else. But this guy has a great personality. He's a hell of a gamer and, and a really, really good Twitch streamer. Uh, I think his name is Briar Rabbit. Man, you were having a fucking <laughs> blast. I was playing. having a blast playing Destiny. some Destiny. You really were, man. It was awesome to see, too. I was watching you guys uh, trying to take down the raid for the first time. Oh, my God. It was so that much was fun. Blind awesome. raids are Christmas to me. They're like they're like Thanksgiving, you know, like you get you get psyched up for it. You can't wait for a Christmas morning, right? That's how I feel going into the raid. I can't wait for a brand new raid. And to go in blind to a brand new raid in Destiny that you've never experienced for, before is like, it's a magnificent experience. There's nothing else in gaming like it. There's other games that have raids, but there's nothing that has, you know, the six-man team, first-person shooter, you know, like this, this sci-fi world. Like, it's just a, it's an amazingly unique experience inside of Destiny. And it's so fun to go in there with a team and figure out all the mechanics and fight your way through hour after hour until you finally are you come out triumphant. You get a bunch of brand new loot that you can show your friends. Like it's truly an amazing experience. It's one of my favorite things to do in gaming. It's one of my favorite things to do, to be honest with you. I've been having a well, blast with Destiny. Yeah. When you when you word it like that, you guys know I'm crazy. My mind immediately goes to some really off the wall shit. Your favorite movie of all time. <laughs> yeah. Right? If if you could Erase that memory and watch it all over again for the oh, very yeah. first time. That's how you feel when you play a raid for the first time. I heard you guys talking. You know, I kind of came in a little bit late. I mm -hmm. wanted to see what was going on. You and your team, you guys are mulling over all these details. Let's try this. Let's try this. Yeah. So that whole feeling of figuring it out is really that initial carrot on the stick that keeps you going crazy. Right. You got until six someone actually people who are trying to figure this thing out together, right? And everybody's got different ideas, and there's di team dynamic where – you know, you got the loudest guys and you got the smartest guys. They're not always the same guys. <laughs> you try to figure that out and have a good time. Uh, but, you know, the key is to always keep it friendly, keep it light. You're trying your hardest. You're trying to beat it your hardest. Uh, but at the same time, it's a video game. You're there to have fun. You're there to enjoy the company of your friends. And uh, it was great. We had... Um, we had Tefty Teft, we had uh, Holtzman, Destin and we had Destin Legary from IGN's Fireteam Chat on. And man, it was a great raid team. Everybody kept it positive all the way through. We had a great time working together. Um, you know, everybody, when we needed to correct a action, everybody was receptive to the correction. Everybody, you know, it, it never got hostile at any point. So it just ended up being a really fun raid. In fact, what we ended up doing is we, once we finished it, we switched characters and jumped right back in. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. We did it. We did two raid runs on the first day. I got two questions. Okay, first question is this: How long did it take you guys to figure it out? And did you did you enlist any help from any other sources before you? you no, we did not enlist any help. It the raid went live at one o'clock, and we were there at one o'clock, one p.m. Eastern time. Um, in the raid like we just went straight in so there were no there were no guides on how to get through right um mm -hmm. you, you get in there and you just got to work through it yes okay so there is one thing right is that since there are multiple people on twitch doing this thing your chat will sometimes you'll you'll have somebody in chat leak information to yeah you. leaking information to you however sometimes it's wildly false <laughs> 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 Those bastards. <laughs> uh, like either they they saw something that they didn't understand, so they don't know how to communicate what they saw, or 
you know, they're explaining it wrong or they're just messing with you. You know, like it could be a hundred different things why that information is false. So you got to take that information with a grain of salt. Um, but man, it is a ton of fun to do the raid. This raid in particular is, I think, more fun than the last one was, King's Fall. I think it's the best raid since the original. Vault of Glass was a ton of fun. This one feels a lot like Vault of Glass where uh, the encounters are very dynamic. You're fighting for your life as well as trying to figure out mechanics. Uh, you have to get things done while you're while you're doing these fights. Um, I mean, it's huge. It's bombastic. It's graphically the most intense thing Destiny's ever done. And I'm really looking forward to PlayStation Pro now because there's one section. This is the this is the section that everybody's seen, right? Is uh, there's this huge? They call it the Death Zamboni. Uh, it's like this huge, monstrous tank-looking thing with this like arm that has like a ball on it, and it's firing all sorts of stuff, and it's moving at you along like the top of the wall, you know, that surrounds the last city, or the Cosmodrome. Sorry. So this thing's coming at you. You got all sorts of stuff going on. You got enemies all around you. You're on top of the wall. You got this huge, epic vista all around you. But you got fucking slow down. Like, slow down in a pretty hardcore mode. Robbie, you did the raid. Did you experience that slow down? Oh, for the uh, that boss battle a little bit? Yes, we did, yeah. actually. When we were running across the bridge at the beginning, it did start to slow down a little bit. And when there were a lot of enemies, like with the engine parts, it was definitely the frame rate was... The frame rate was I think everyone's had that. Harsh, yeah. So I'm looking forward yeah. to the PS Pro. I'm hoping that that solves that issue for me personally. Although, I got to say, Destiny, you know, like... You've gotten, we've come so far. Like, why all of a sudden now are we seeing this slowdown, right? We've seen these huge, bombastic things before. Why all of a sudden are we seeing this? But I got to say, it's the most fun raid. The Rise of Iron content that came out. That's the new DLC that just released. So far, and I've put a lot of hours into it so far uh, to level up for the raid. It is my favorite content that we've played in Destiny. Uh, the story is short, it only lasts what? about two to two and a half hours, but it's fantastic. Uh, it's got exotic weapon quests that I swear to God I almost teared up after after one of them. Like it was that impactful to me. <laughs> I know what one you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yep. Um, like the the this new area, the Plaguelands, is graphically the most interesting thing they've done. It's mo the most intense thing they've done. They've got in this one Plaguelands area, which is an extension of the Cosmodrome that we've had since the Alpha. It's got. Everything from like flowing lava to like like these like misty ghostly bridges that you have to cross to a like a nuclear weapon missile silo that you have to like go down. It's I mean there's so much in it. There's all sorts of secrets to uncover. There's a huge tanker ship that's crashed and you got to like crawl all over it. I mean enormous areas to the scale that we've never seen in Destiny, which has really got me excited for Destiny 2 because if this is what they can do once they leave the Xbox 360 and PS4 or PS3 behind, like what can they do with a brand new engine that's just running on that PS4 and the Xbox One, right? Like oh, an yeah. engine designed for these newer consoles and with the power of the PS Pro, PS4 Pro and the Scorpio like on the horizon, like that's even more that's even more exciting. So I got to say, man, Rise of Iron, this new expansion for Destiny has me like so excited. I don't think it's going to like last an entire year, right? If you're expecting to get to play Rise of Iron for an entire year, I don't know about that, right? Unless you're really into the PVP of Destiny, mm, you know, it's it's not we'll see, but I doubt it, you know. But if you're into raiding, yeah. the raid is fantastic. If you're into strikes, these three newish strikes, they're great. Um, the, the new story is fantastic. It only lasts two and two hours though. So just, you know, be aware there's new exotics. There's new ways to customize your character. There's a new record book that has some of the sweetest looking gear I've ever seen. I got oh, a fucking yes. auto rifle out of the raid that has firefly on it. Yep. So I mo I'm mowing people down with my auto rifle. And every time I, I kill somebody with a headshot, they explode and do area of effect damage. Fucking marvel. I bet it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! man wow. I am okay, I am uh, beside myself with this. Yeah. So, this so is, which this is... raid weapons did you manage to get, Briar? What have you gotten so far? I got that auto rifle I just told you about. I got a scout rifle. 
uh, that reloads every time you hit three headshots in a row, it gives you two bullets back to its magazine. So it's like for every three shots you take, you That's really only tap take one. Right? It's, called, it's called triple tap and then triple double is kind triple of the double. extension okay. of it. Yeah. Um, I got a shotgun that is a max I have that one too. range. That one's good. A maxed out range shotgun. It's not, you could get perks that would give it a better range, but it's a really good shotgun. And when you hit somebody with that, when you kill somebody with that, it gives you extra shields and faster movement speed, which is great. <laughs> and yeah. then I got a rocket launcher that holds three rockets in the magazine, has like maxed out reload speed. And when you reload it, it puts four rockets in the magazine. So you can fire That's like seven rockets axe. in like the span of like 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> now, I haven't played this. Are you speaking? Have you guys tried the new Gallahorn? Yeah. That was my yeah. weapon. Yep. What, what are your thoughts on that? that? That alone could get me to go play the DLC right now. It feels like the Gallahorn, man. The Gallahorn is really? back. It's been gone for a year, so it's nice to have it back. It does a ton of damage, just like you expect it to. It's uh, nostalgic. It's a lot of people fun. are using it in the in my on my raid team uh, for specific enemies or for doing damage. The last boss of the raid. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's cool as hell. <laughs> like, and there's some really cool mechanics to doing the fight as well. Uh, but a lot of people are using it in that in that boss fight. Uh, it's it's nuts, man. It's the guy. Let me, let me ask you a Gal question. Horn. You know, as the guy has probably completed the least amount of raids here, uh, as far as difficulty goes. How does this compare to some of the other raids that have been released during DLC? Um, I would put it, I'd, I'd say right out of the gate. For me, it was the easiest one. Wow. Um, there are a few reasons for that, though. Uh, one is it's not, I was overleveled for the raid. Uh, oh, which wow. Is a, that's the mm. first time I've ever done that. That's the first time I've ever been over, for Vault of Glass, I was hilariously under leveled when I was going into that because the vault of glass was how you leveled up to get <laughs> like vault of glass, right? It's like you had to, to the end game was getting vault of glass armor and weapons to level up your character. Right. So wow. that was annoying. That was hard. Vault of glass was amazing, but I mean, <laughs> the leveling system was fucking bullshit. Yeah. <clears throat> Proto's <laughs> end was hard because again, I was, you know, everybody went in there at the same level and we were under leveled. So there were literally enemies in there that you just had to fire and fire and fire at. And then Crota himself was a bugged out mess and that made it pretty hard. Oh um, boy. Remember when everyone would unplug like the ethernet cable on the yeah. Xbox one and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. King's fall raid was just mechanically very difficult to figure out. This was less mechanics, more fighting, uh, but we were over leveled. That's the first time I've been in a raid where I was over leveled, you know, like I was now, comfortable in there without what? dying. What level were you going into this? And and what level do you think most people would have been? I entered the raid at, I think, 371 or 372. Um, mm -hmm. And the recommended recommended was 360. Or, like, that was... No, it's 370. Of, yeah. Yeah, it's 370. 360, though, is what they said before that. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. they, had, they had put the 360 out there. And I think you can... You can do it at 365 and be, you know, not a liability to your team. <laughs> at 360, I did it at 352 be... the other day, so we got yeah. past the first two bosses, which I'm incredibly proud of. We were all very underleveled, mm -hmm. which was awesome. So I think in, in the future, Destiny will probably have to take a look at that, like making sure that people can't. Because what we did basically is we got Rise of Iron. We found out what the fastest ways to level up our character were, and we fucking ground it hard. I was spending. 12 to 16 hours a day, just grinding, grinding, grinding to get as Jesus high a light level prior. as I could. Oh, man, that's right. fucking hardcore, bro. Yeah. Well, we, you know, the goal was uh, going into the raid was to make an attempt at world's first, right? A world's first clear. And uh, we didn't get that. I don't even think we got in the top 100, but we did do it oh. in about four and a half hours, four hours, four and a half hours, which was pretty good. Last year, King's Fall took us about 12, 13 hours. <laughs> i remember that man i stayed for a lot of that too that was a long stream yeah that was yeah. a good day though it was fun it was fun I, I have no regrets on the king's fall day but i have no oh, regrets yeah. on this one i think i like this raid better the king's fall raid uh after i did it for a while what i found was that the mechanics were so set in stone that it, i could get anybody through that raid all you had to do is stand exactly where i fucking put you right it's like robbie you stay in here beastly you stay in here both of you fire here when I say, 
and we'll get through it, right? Yeah. This raid is going to be a little different. It's like, yeah, yeah, I can tell you what to do, but once the time comes, you're going to have to be moving. You're going to have to be doing this. You're going to have to be doing that. We're going to have to communicate, you know, like who's going where, who's doing this, what, you know, who's got left side, who's got right side, who's got the back, you know, all that stuff. And it's rotating because all sorts of stuff is going on. So it's, it's a much more fluid and dynamic raid, which to me is a lot more fun. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, and, and this is actually getting me really excited, making me want to, you know, delve deep into Destiny again. Yeah. Uh, the Taken King DLC, when that came out, it was expansive. It was really big to me. Yeah. To me, that was a huge chunk of a game. Yeah. How how does the Rise of Iron? How does it compete? It's smaller. It's smaller in scope than Rise of Iron. You get a new playable area. You yeah. get like a new patrol area, like you did with uh, the Dreadnought. The Plague Lands, mm -hmm. I think, is actually better than the Dreadnought. I think it's it feels bigger to me. Uh, maybe that's because I'm flying around on my Sparrow. I don't know. Uh, but it feels, it, it's a lot better looking. It's not just like a brown and black dark space. Like all, everywhere well, you gotta you get go. brown and black shit, man. <laughs> that's a good point. I'll, I'll check myself. But this one is much, you know, it's it's much more varied. There's like, like I said before, like there's a bridge that you cross. It's in like the mist going over a ravine. There's like a huge crashed ship with containers falling off of it. Um, there's like this big area that has got like lava flowing through it. Uh, and then there's the Archon's Forge, which you go in and it's like a, you know, like a, what do you call that, Robbie? I don't even, what is, what's like the type of event, like a horde mode? It's not really a horde mode. It's more like an arena mode, right? And you go in there and people can just join yeah. on you and you all fight together. Uh, which is really funny. You get some amazing loot. I got the sniper rifle. that has got like a six foot long spike coming out of the front of it. Sick, dude. It's oh, that's really the, impressive. Uh, but not forgotten. I yeah. want that one so oh, it's, down boundless. It's really good, God. Robbie. It's really good. <laughs> Everyone I know has it, and I don't. And I'm like, ah. Oh. We got to do some yeah. Argon's Forge then, Robbie, because it's dude. Argon's totally Forge. Want to. So they've tried this like arena type mode before in Destiny. They had yeah. uh, Challenge of Elders. Uh, then they had, or I'm sorry, Prison Elders. Prison then they Elders. did the um, the or Court Orcs. of Oryx. Then they revamped the Prison Elders, made the Challenge of Elders. Um, and I've never really dug any of them. This was the first one where I'm like, yeah, they got it right this time. The arena is Same. interesting enough that I have yeah, fun in there. Fun. The fights feel different enough while I'm in there that I'm, again, it's like it's fun. It's it's relaxing. It's not relaxing, but it's like it's just a fun way to spend some time. Whereas Horde of Oryx was so confined that it just got boring really quick because there's like three pillars to hide behind. It was boring. <laughs> you man. know, like it just never it. really did it for me. Prison of Elders got boring too and repetitive. Yeah. This is fun. I this agree, is fun. Totally. It's really fun. Um, so that you know, it's it's smaller. To answer your question, Beastly, it's smaller in scope, right? There is a new raid. There's a new uh, arena mode. There's a very short story. There's a five mission long story, and there's um, uh, there's uh, Playlands. Yeah, there's one brand new strike and two revamped ones. Yeah. Oh, they revamped old strikes in here. Yeah, I remember the first one, the Devil's Lair, with Sepix Prime at the end. Yeah. They redid that one. They did a nice job on it too. They did a. It's pretty fun. I think that probably honestly, my I think favorite that strike. Yeah. Things like that, to me, I mean, even just revamping old strikes breathes a lot of a lot of life into this game. And from what I understand, this is the last DLC pack we're going to get for Destiny, correct? But we from suspect. what we know, yes, yeah. We don't know it for sure. I mean, yeah, there could be another one in spring, but I think it would rather be an update. It'll be like the April update this year. What I definitely. suspect is that we're gonna we're gonna see live events going through the winter, uh, like we saw last year. We'll see the Festival of the Lost. We'll see the uh, Sparrow Racing League, uh, and then we'll see you know something Crimson in February. Doubles. Crimson. I don't know if they're gonna do Crimson Doubles again. I don't think they really liked how that went. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see some kind of an April update. But I don't think it's going to be like a big DLC. I think it'll be something smallish. And then we're going to see Destiny 2 come around next year. Yeah, totally. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, you were just talking about kind of these new horde modes. Not really horde modes, but events. Uh, similar to the Prison of Elders. Prison of Elders became very bland for me really quick. Yeah. After you go through it you know, a couple of times, it's pretty much over. Is this new horde mode does it have the same kind of feel or do you think it has more of a replayability factor to it for me it feels more replayability replayable because first of all there's more people there it's not just a three-man event like the prison of elders okay yeah. you got 
you can bring in a fire team of three, but there's also random people just showing up, and you can get up to eight people in there. Is it eight or six? I think there's up to eight people that could be. I in think there. it's eight. Yeah, uh, which is cool. And then you can manipulate, you know, matchmaking a little bit to actually get a party of eight in there, which is really fun. Like, if, so <laughs> all, all eight of you are on party chat fighting together inside inside of this thing in the Archon's Forge, uh, and then you pick up these like little uh, Siva things that you put in the in the uh, thing to get the activity There's all going. Kind of things. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you get the activity started and you know it starts and the loot is dropping. There's very specific rewards that can come out of here that are very, very good. The loot is way more exciting too to me than Quarter Works. Like just getting that yeah. sniper, getting the fusion rifle and stuff. I really want those. They like, learned those a lot, I think, from the loot in the Taken King. The Taken King DLC was fantastic, but the loot sucked. Like there's just nothing good. Yeah. Like nothing good came out of the Taken King. I'd say the, you know, the exotics were good, but like you know, like the raid loot sucked. I can't think of anything that was really like the raid oh my loot God. was kind of okay. Yeah, yeah, but this this is different, man. We're getting we got a record book that we're getting amazing loot from. We got the Archon's Forge. We're getting amazing loot from. We haven't even seen Trials of Osiris. We haven't even seen Iron, Iron Banner. Banner. Uh, and I've seen I ha we have seen the Trials of Osiris uh, armor, which looks fucking sick it's like blue it sexy it's blue and gold beastly and then you can put ornaments on it that like have like these like pink holograms on it oh my god it looks amazing i'll be looking forward to seeing i'm gonna that be the stream. sexiest garden beast beastly <laughs> wow almost the sexiest garden i'm like whoa sexiest guardian sorry in the garden sexiest garden yeah in the in black the garden, garden. <laughs> yeah so, i'm really let, happy about it let me ask you a question at this point Destiny, Vanilla, all these DLCs that have come out, around what is the standard cost to have all this stuff if you were to buy it as they came out? Uh, they released a collection, the Destiny collection right now. Uh, I think that's $60. Um, yep. I can't confirm the price of that. I think it's $60. It is that comes sexy. with everything up to this point. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, absolutely man. buy that if you don't have Destiny. So Best value. That, that's really a no-brainer because it's more than a complete game. It's super expansive. It's Really, uh, it's a fucking universe if you buy it at this point. Yeah. You get all that. And, you know, Wowzers. the game has changed so much since the launch. The, that core gameplay is still there, right? Is that It's still fun to shoot shit in Destiny. And that's what huh? hooked me originally, right? There were some major problems with Destiny when it first launched. The story was incomprehensible. There were cutscenes that that didn't make any sense make to the any story. Sense. Yeah, didn't skip them either for a uh, year. The the end game was basically non-existent, uh, and they've really they've changed a lot of stuff about it. So now, like any way you want to play this game, you're gonna level up your character. Basically, if you like running strikes, you can do it that way. If you like playing PvP, you can do it that way. If you like running raids, you can do it that way. Like any way you want to do it, you're gonna level up your character. You're gonna kind of like constantly just be upgrading your character. It's just a more fun game than it used to be. The stories are much better. The story in The Taken King was fantastic with Nathan Fillion doing uh, Cade 6. The, the story in Rise of Iron, I think, is even better. Uh, the exotic quest, like they've, they've learned how to give out exotics in a much, a much better way. Uh, so then, now that you have a story that goes along with that exotic weapon as opposed to just you know, randomly showing up. Um, yeah. You know, I think there's still work they can do. I'm looking forward to Destiny 2 so that they can take everything they've learned from making Destiny and put it into this next game, like, from the ground up, as opposed to just trying to modify Destiny to, you know, make it better. But you can see the changes they've made. There's a part, this is going to be a little bit spoiler. I'll try and make it super quick. If you skip ahead two minutes, I swear to God, I'll be done talking about it. Oh, Briar. There's a, if you go That's into fun. the new social area called Fellwinter Peak, you can actually go up and climb like up out of what you would expect to be the playable area Go and climb up. like up above this huge temple and like on and on and on and on right till you get to the top and then there's like a reward up there for for reaching it's a difficult climb like it's a jumping puzzle basically to me i was i was doing this and i'm like you know all those people who spent all that time trying to explore the tower and like jump around in the tower and try and get off the map and try and find new areas of the tower and then we got the 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 reef right we got the playable space in the reef and everybody's exploring the reef and like jumping down into pits and trying to get like as far out into space as they could 
<laughs> Bungie saw all this, right? They saw they said, what we were doing. Do something for him. Well, yeah, I mean, like they like doing this, so let's build the game around how they like to play it. That's what Destiny has been. That's what's been so impressive about Rise of Iron is that there's so many times where I'm just like, damn. You know, they saw what we like to do that wasn't necessarily built into the game, and they let us do it, They're right? They, they just, like, they've been building the game up. They clearly didn't know what they had on their hands when they made this game, right? They had an idea. It was a good one. But they didn't know exactly how players would respond to it. But they've seen it now, and now they're building the game with that knowledge in mind, and it's really becoming a much more fun game, which is great. Now, I got uh, actually two questions. Uh, with the Taken King DLC, uh, Bungie decided to add a lot of character into NPCs. Mm -hmm. They were done through cutscenes and just the interactions and these woody little quirks that went back and forth. And you kind of got a feel for who you're talking to, whether you liked him or you didn't like him. Has that continued here? Yeah. Um, but I will say this is that the story is shorter than with the Taken King. So, um, And Nathan Fillion isn't in it. <laughs> so um okay like the you basically you know you you become an uh, iron wolf in this you can become an iron lord in this dlc iron lord and you you a lot of your main interaction with is with lord salad and the the guy in charge of the iron banner and you do you find out his backstory you find out you know what happened to the other iron lords um and and more and i think there's more coming with the taken king that was like kind of you know, a week after release, we, oh, shit, look at this new quest that just popped up. Or a month after release, oh, geez, there's something new that kicked, popped up. And I think we're going to see more of that, um, specifically with another Iron Lord that's kind of missing in action. Yeah, and there's the book, too. There's a couple of quests in there that still haven't been unlocked, so yeah. we'll see what those are about. But, yeah, I mean, there is the story is better. I don't know if the characters is, are as good, just because in my heart I love Nathan Fillion so much. <laughs> you know, I love that yeah, Cade Six portrayal. It was, it was fun. It was funny. You know, it, it was just a really good story. Yeah. Another question, and I'm sorry, guys. I got a lot of questions about Destiny. That's the thing that Ooh, keeps my mind do. going. Yeah. I mean, and it's it's really um, it's informative for people like myself who probably don't know. With the Taken King, we were introduced to the Taken. These new reworked characters or enemies that we've seen in previous versions of Destiny. Are there any new enemies that have been introduced? With this latest DLC. What they did was they took the Fallen and reworked the Fallen and made them like these SIVA infected Fallen. So they look similar to the Fallen, but they've got new graphics. They look, they look similar to the Fallen, but they look different from the Fallen. So They're red and black. You know, in, the, in a similar vein to what they did with the Taken last year was they added like a new like a new graphical style to some of the enemies they already had. That's mm -hmm. very much what they did here. I would say it's more dramatic this time around than it was with the Taken. And, oh, yeah, and, I thought the Taken were pretty dramatic. Well, yeah. the, you know? instead of just it's, being I mean, like a black shader on everybody, these guys have new geometry. Like some of the guys have mohawks, some of the guys have peg legs. Like they actually you. look different geometry wise. Uh, yeah, and they have new attacks. Different. Obviously, they have new um, they have new weapons. So the tactics for fighting them isn't the same as it was before, even though they look similar. Okay, so they've actually made you rework or rethink the way that you attack these types of enemies. All yeah, right. I mean you're still shooting shit. Yeah, you just shoot still the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they look cool too. Like they got like this black and red kind of theme to it. Like even the yeah. raid weapons look amazing because it's got this black and red with the sieve infection. Like they look awesome. I yeah. love the theme of it. Yeah, me too. Okay, so real quick, just to tally this up, I want to see just how dedicated you guys are. Briar, I'm pretty sure you're going to have more hours than humanly possible. But the game came out Tuesday at midnight, correct? Tuesday morning? Uh, Tuesday, uh, at, it was 5 a.m. my time. 2 a.m. Okay, so. We've, we've this game has been available for five days. If you guys had to guess, how many hours do you think you've already invested into this new DLC? I saw your eyes oh, roll. Man. Right there, <laughs> oh, yeah. holy shit. I put in a shit ton too. So, I can uh, would it be closer to five, 10, 15, 20? It'd be closer to yeah. 60. You really? Holy shit. Oh, Are wow. you serious? Yeah. I mean, um, Briar, you're nuts. What the hell of a work week, man? I think I was putting in. I woke up at 4 a.m. on Tuesday, got on at 5, and the the DLC actually had some trouble launching, so I don't think I started playing until 7, but then I played oh, from 7. 
I want to. I don't remember what time I stopped playing for the live stream. I think it was around two or three, but then I ate dinner and I hopped back on to grind. And I think I ground like you know into the night. That's basically every day. I just played Destiny all day. I stop. I would stop to eat and sleep, and then get back on. If I wasn't live streaming or making a, if I was live streaming, I was playing. If I wasn't making a video, then I was playing or I was sleeping. But I, I was just I running strikes, man. Running strikes, trying to level up. Let me just say that I truly, no jokes here, admire the fucking dedication you put into what you love. Uh, science <laughs> awesome. and doc, science and doctors have not come up with the actual name for this illness, but I'm sure it's <laughs> going to be called. It's going to be called Destiny Briar Thrombosis, where your time actually stops. Dude, my thumb is yeah. actually worn out. Like it's tired. <laughs> like, like you know, have like you if you went too hard on leg day, you know how your like legs are just tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my thumb feels, thumb man. I swear to God. Yeah. I can just imagine the commercial now. Have you experienced lost time? Do you do your thumbs are your thumbs always numb? I was do icing it on Thursday. <laughs> do you own a copy of Destiny? Well, if you do, if you've answered yes to all these questions, you might have Briar Rabbit Destiny thrombosis. <laughs> Mom, I don't know where I've been for the last five hours. You've been on that guy. Damn game, Tommy. The crazy oh, thing, shit. Beastly, yeah. is that I got like all that work and I got up to like level 371. There were guys at 385. Fuck that, yeah. man. Wow. That's, I mean, they, that's, that's... they were up there. Yeah. Well, let me just say this and no bullshit. More than likely, I will be playing this game this week. You guys know I'm never, I've never been super hardcore. I play it. I enjoy it for what it is. Uh, I've never aspired to be in the top you know, echelon of Destiny players, but I do admire it and I appreciate what you guys do. Listen to you guys flesh out the, the new uh, things that have been added to the game and it's kind of the new the new perks and of course the new raid has really piqued my interest and I'll definitely be picking this up now. Mm -hmm. It's really, to me, it's incredible that uh, 60 hours, I mean, the only time I get up at four in the morning is if my wife bumps me, then I get up and get on that. But you got <laughs> up at four and got up and got on Destiny Holy shit. I admire yeah. that. I was playing Destiny almost all day too. Like it just I put probably 20 to 30 hours at least too. Like it's quite a lot. So I, and honestly, I can't think of the last time that a game has really pulled me in like that. I feel like I may have missed the most important boat of my life cuz the game's been out for years and it still has one of the most dedicated fan bases out there. This game yeah. has dedicated the fans are dedicated the way that they are for a while and shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. some of these you know MMOs and MOBAs that exist that are like Hearthstone, people are just as fervent and excited about Destiny as they are some of those games, and that really doesn't really it doesn't happen on consoles. I think Destiny might might be one of the most. It's the only game the, I know of that stayed up top of the Twitch directory for the last two years on consoles. Like Call of Duty is usually up there, but that changes games every year. Yeah, that's. But this is the same game, man. Just this expanded is the same upon. game. Yeah, I mean, they've actually really expanded it and, and brought the story. I don't want any spoilers, but does does it pick up right where the last DLC ended? Once you beat the raid. I mean, basically, it's like a set a separate story, right? Like it's a different infection. It's like about the Iron Lords, how they went down to stop the plague, the Siva from spreading, and like you see they sealed the doors away and everything, and it's like it reemerged. Like they're all separate stories within Destiny. Even the Taken King was kind of separate from the original vanilla story. So but it definitely does kind of pick up from there. Let me ask you a question, Briar, because I know this kind of stuff really gets you excited. If somehow they released just a free update that put all these planets out there in space and allowed you to go to them um uh no man's sky style, would that fucking blow yeah. your mind? That'd be sick, oh. man. That'd be oh sick. Oh my god, yes. That's what I want from Destiny 2. Like, just be able to travel to any planet we want. Like, true interplanetary travel. There's two games that have come out since Destiny that are like, how did Destiny not, like, see this one coming and, like, incorporate it? Or that I'd like to see them take the tech out? One is obviously No Man's Sky. Being able to, like, fly from planet to planet would be so they sick. We're that. collecting these ships, but, like, we don't do anything with them. It's completely Just check them out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it'd be so cool if you could actually fly them. Uh, but the other one is uh, Halo 5, that Warzone mode. Oh, yeah. Where it's like a PvE slash PvP activity. Like, oh, my God, that would be so much fun in Destiny. I hope they yeah. do a big scale battle like that. Yeah, that would be awesome. I, I haven't played that mode in Halo 5 yet. I'll it's definitely worth checking try it out. out. It's very cool. 
Like Warzone you have, sick. You, you have like NPCs, you have PVE enemies in your multiplayer uh, on big maps, and then you get points by killing those enemy or PVEs. So it's similar to Titanfall, right? Or kind a of, game that, yeah. that really sucks bad, Umbrella Corps. Umbrella Corps has a similar idea of it's a it's, uh, open map, PvP characters out there, and PvE characters out there trying to kill you as well. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I would like to. Uh, I'd love to see that come to Destiny. Oh, oh I didn't even talk about Supremacy. There's a new game mode that came to uh, Destiny's PvP called oh, Supremacy. Oh, damn it, Brad. Talk about it. <laughs> it's, if you've ever played Kill Confirmed in Call of Duty, it's that. Yeah. But in Destiny, I used to love, you know, you guys know I loved Call of Duty for the longest time. And Kill yeah. Confirmed was my favorite game mode in Call of Duty. So the fact that they moved Kill Confirmed into Destiny just made me so happy because it is a really fun game mode. Just run it's around. It's very fun. Today I was running around with a sidearm, just like racking up the kills and picking up crests. It was so fun. Yeah. So, so what do they drop once you kill them? Uh, they just they drop these like crests. Anybody who dies drops a crest. If you pick up a teammate's crest, it prevents the team from scoring. If you pick up an enemy's crest, then your team gets a point. Wow. And you play up to I don't know 150 points or 140 points, something like that. Yeah, it's 150, I believe. Yeah. That's. It's epic, and, it, and you know what, guys? I gotta say, bravo for Destiny. It's been goddamn it's a fun, year man. and a half since Destiny has completely taken over our show. <laughs> uh, but but when there's a new DLC, it's warranted. I know there's a lot of you know excited fans out there, really you know just digging deep into this. And from the sounds of it, it's really really awesome. It's such a tough time, man. Brian, I know you remember when we were younger and we'd have a game. We play that one game all year. Well, you kind of still do, mm-hmm. but. I, I have <laughs> so many fucking games to play. It's so hard. It's like I started playing Metal Gear, and then I got Overwatch and all this crap. I'm playing Rise of the Tomb Raider, and it's so hard to dedicate time. And on top of that, I got 200 kids in my house. Oh, guys, I found out what I'm having. It's another little girl. So mm, Congratulations. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah, that's great news, I was man. right, too. I said it would be a girl. That's yeah, yeah. awesome. Wow, you, know, you the, picked that 50-50 right on the nose. Yeah, yeah, right on the fucking nose. I was confident, too. I'm like, it's going to be a girl. And it was. Now, if you, now if you said it was a hermaphrodite, and it, then it ended up being that? That'd be I would something. Be, I, would, I would be amazed that you figured out. That's like that, hitting double zero also, on roulette, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, bet on double zero. What are you, crazy? <laughs> and also you don't have to be pay trying, me $1,000 if I got that right. I'm just saying no, I'd be coming to your house <laughs> to fuck you up for, for doing that. <laughs> Jesus. But, um. But yeah, man, it's it's an exciting time to be a gamer. It's just God. Sometimes you'll get to the point when you guys grow up, I guess, and you start to have your own money. You buy any console, any game you want. You get to a point where you look at it, and it's like a mountain that's over. You can't conquer the mountain. It's just so much games, so little time. And yeah. you know, now we got October coming, games coming out. We got PSVR. We got Call of Duty, which of course Briar's going to buy that. Everybody's going to buy that game. Yeah. Everybody wants to remaster. So it's like so many games is just not enough time to play them and it really sucks if you're a kid at home and you're you're going to school i don't see that it sucks do. i think it's awesome man it's like it's, it's the awesome best time ever to games. like yeah i remember years where it'd just be like there's just nothing to play man like drought yeah Try this, year, drought years, yeah. this year i yeah. think last year was similar it's just like there's so many great games coming out all the time that you know that's great I still have you got games you bought last year. You still got um, I still got Far Cry Four. I never played it. Far Cry. Bought the, I still have Shadows of Mordor. I I still have uh, Rainbow Six Siege. I still have God of War Remaster. I've got Final Fantasy um uh what is it? Thir- I'm trying to remember ten and ten ten and ten two for PS4 oh, yeah. still in the wrapper. Never opened it up. It's just really, really tough, man. I got games from 2014 that I still haven't played yet. And here's something for all you kids out there. If you're 15, 16, 17, you're still living at home, and all you got to do is clean your ass and clean your room, play all the games you can. Because once you grow up and you got to clean somebody else's bathroom or do all kinds of work, and then you realize that life isn't a game anymore, it's going to suck when you only got an hour a day to play a game. And you can't do that because you got to impress some lady. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm just starting <laughs> to get started with that. So thanks for reminding me. Oh yeah, well you're still at home, right. Robbie. Yeah, play Thank those God. damn games. Yeah, no, so, I have lots of time now, through games, so I'm lucky. Well, you are a lucky fuck. Now that we've gotten Destiny behind us, let's just get into some of the news that we've got this week. It isn't that much news. A lot of the stuff you guys probably already heard, but Gears of War 4 has officially gone gold. The game will be released on October 11th on Xbox One and oh, wow. Windows 10 on PC. So that's right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. 
it is. Um, I I'm picking this game it, up. I, I like Gears oh, War. I'm picking this one up. It sounds like fun. It looks pretty good. It's yeah. uh, Unreal Four, I believe, uh, the engine behind it. It looks looks like a sound game. I've ne- you guys know I've never really played many Gears of War games. The they're good, ever got- Like they're fun. The story, okay. you know, they do a good job in the story. The mechanics. The campaigns. You've, well, you've played the mechanics because every game copied Gears of War. <laughs> Gotta be the shit out. Yeah, of Yeah, every third party. Person. Yeah, every third person. But they're good. You know, they're they're satisfying games to play, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the fourth one on the next gen console. I don't. I've never liked the multiplayer in Gears of War games. It's just not my style. Me neither. I don't care for it either um, at all. But I will. I will put, buy this game and play the campaign just for fun. And well, it's developed in Canada. It's developed really close to where I live, so yeah, well, that changes my mind significantly. Fuck that! <laughs> Screw you guys. Uh, Canada is great. I am gonna get that across. It's Just a wonderful kidding. country. You I guys are a kidding. bunch of haters. True yeah. enough. <laughs> it's so come, true. Come over here and enjoy it, okay? Put some talking shit. Uh, for me. I've kind of, after watching the climate and some of the games that have been released recently and on top of what I just mentioned about having a ton of games to play that I still haven't completed, I'm going to decide to wait and see what this game has. I'm going to wait to see what you guys have to say about it and what some of the gaming pundits in the community have to say about it before I put my money down. Uh, as someone who's never really been into the Gears of War series, I was hardcore into the PlayStation world when Gears of War was really big. Even though the very first time I saw Gears of War, I almost shit my pants and I had a PS3, and I was like, God, there's nothing on PS3 that looks this good. I'm going to wait and see if the game is actually good versus just looking good. You know, it's funny. I had the opposite reaction. When I first saw it, I was kind of like, ah, it looks like a dumb space marine thing. I was not interested at all. Uh, but for some reason, I ended up picking it up anyway, and I loved it. And then I played the second one. I played the third one. I loved both of them. Or I loved all three of them. So I'm looking. I There was like a fourth one, like a pseudo fourth one that apparently wasn't that good. I never played it. Judgment. Yeah, the prequel. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully it's good. I hope All so, right. too, man. New developer, you know. I hope they'll uh, do well. Because that's Jernon never Canada. gone wrong before. Journal oh. Canada, man. Yeah. Square Enix has filed a trademark for an unannounced game known as Stormblood. We know I nothing about it, but... Yeah, it sounds, cool. sounds like a period for one of the X-Men. Uh, well, it could be exciting. Who knows? Yeah. I'd watch that. Yeah. What about the uh, right. NX news? I think we just skipped over that. Uh, go ahead and give us the NX news, Robbie. All right. So this week, the Pokemon company has announced support for Pokemon games for the unannounced Nintendo NX console. That's our story. And uh, one thing i got to say, where the hell is the NX? Why is this thing not announced yet? It's Man, six months it's, away. It's going to be delayed. From, I mean, Did you guys think about that? Like, why is this thing not talked about yet? They said nothing. <laughs> Well, I expect to hear about it by now for sure. Tokyo Game Show or something. Absolutely, man. It's six months away. Like they, this should they, they should Is get it? the hype up by now. Yeah. How do we know it's six months away? October, November, December, January, February, March. That's six months. Who's saying that it's coming out in March? They did. Nintendo. Nintendo said it's coming out in March. Jesus yeah. Christ, yes. When are they going to talk about this thing? Are they waiting until the new year? I don't know. They're crazy. <laughs> They're going to reveal it a week before it goes on sale. Maybe they're going to be the they're gonna pull a like, Sega yeah. Saturn and just drop the thing. Oh, you can only no. buy it at KB Toy Stores. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine the disaster that would be. God, I hope not. Yeah, I can. Maybe. I remember the Sega Dreamcast launch. Or <laughs> like Dreamcast, the Sega <laughs> Saturn launch. Saturn. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine exactly how big a disaster it would be. <laughs> uh, what, what are they doing in Apple? That? They're just like a week before it comes out, they announce it, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's out next week. Like, jeez. That would so, be kind of so, cool, though, if they announce it and say, and it's available next right week. Yeah, oh, that'd be yeah, cool. Well, that'd be amazing, yeah. but that would hurt their sales because people wouldn't have time to learn what it is. Well, Nintendo's like. already screwed the pooch so many times when it comes to their marketing and their advertising and getting the message to people on what their new consoles are. Just look at the Wii U. But they need to um, be more open and, and, and really explain to people this is – They've already said it's not the successor to the Wii U, which is bullshit. They said it's not the successor to the 3DS, which is bullshit. They need to say this is absolutely the successor. The 3DS has been out there since 2011. It's old news. People aren't you know, super excited about what it can do. This is the future, and it's the future for our, our home consoles as well. It's amazing. Go out and buy it now. I mean, they've got to do something different compared to what they've done in the past. And as someone who's never really been into Pokemon games, it's a huge... Huge franchise and, and, and them getting that message yeah, out there big, to the yeah. consumer. 
I, I thought that was already known. It must have been just rumored that a Pokemon game would be launching with the thing. I could have sworn that was the case. I, I am excited for the NX, though. Like, more so than any console that Nintendo has released in the last, you know, number of years. Um, like, just the yeah. idea of being able to have a portable console that I could just, like, you know, dock and play on my TV. That's just a cool concept, you know? Yeah. I think it could be really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. it. I'm I'm really excited about it. There's a lot of things to be excited about it right now. To be excited about, I'm sorry. You know, next month we've got VR coming out. You know, November we've got PlayStation Pro. You know, and and of course next year Nintendo's new console is a lot. And then to be Xbox excited. Scorpio too. Like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening right now. Native 4K, man. That's what they're saying. Even though we can't really get native 1080p 60 now, that fucking thing better be able to do it. The way they're talking, it yeah. better be able to do it because it's not gonna be able many... to do it. Like, no way. You can't That's do what it they're saying. A, you can't do it on a you know two thousand dollar computer <laughs> with a ten eighty in it. Like, uh, unless they got some trickery up their sleeves or they know something we don't know. I don't think so, I mean, man. That's that's my thing. I mean, they're they're throwing shots and throwing shade at Sony They'll for play their castle Czech crashers at native 4K. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. That's great. Then what would PS4 Pro be able to run at native 4K? Because it's even less powerful. Well, they're using that screen door trickery. Check, checkered board, yeah. checkerboard rendering. Yeah, they'll be able to play chess at 4K. <laughs> Dude, Dude, battle chess jet. though is lit. <laughs> <laughs> battle chess is the shit. Honestly. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, man. But it, there's a lot of things going on. It's a lot of money, a lot of reasons to be saving your money if you really want to you sure. know, have the, the latest, latest and greatest. Uh, the only thing I'm really concerned about is PlayStation VR right now. Nothing else has really gotten me excited. And continuing on with our last little bit of news oh, from sorry. software, long-time developers. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, there's people in chat asking. I guess they don't know much about the NX. They're saying, so is this a portable console or a home console? So I should explain. From what we know, this is a hybrid console. So this is something that is going to be portable, but you can also plug into your TV. And we don't know. They might have separate processors and things like that, but it's two separate devices, basically. So, yeah, it's all rumored no, at this point. But That's not what I understand at all. It's one device that you'll... But there's a dock. You're right. Yeah, That sorry. will dock. You'll have a dock sitting like near your TV that's plugged into your TV. But this one device is what plays the games. And either you can use it as a handheld console by plugging the controller onto the sides of it, or you can pull the controller off the sides, plug it on into yeah. the dock, and then instead of playing on the small screen on the portable device, you play it on your TV. Yeah, I apologize. That's what I meant. Thank you, Briar. Uh, I think Beastly's gone. What happened to him? We lost him? Shit. Well, he didn't like you talking trash about the NX, man. Yeah, he's like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that it for news? Uh, no, there's actually some news about from software, which is pretty exciting. You want to talk about that? Yeah. All right. So this week, oh, he's back. Actually, I'll let him do it. <laughs> I was listening the whole time. <laughs> From Software, uh, longtime developers of the acclaimed Dark Souls series, has confirmed it's currently working on three new projects. One of them is confirmed to be a brand new Armored Core game. Woo! Armored yeah. Core. It's only been 500 years since we've seen one of those, right, Brian? Yeah, it's been a oh, long time. I can't even remember the last time I played one of those. I think it was on the PlayStation 2. PS2. Actually, let me find out. Do you have fond memories, or were they kind of... No, yeah, I like those games. Sad. I don't know. You know, it was a different era then. Like, what do you do with an Armored Core game now? Because basically, they were they were rail shooters, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe you can make an open-world mech game or something like that. Like, they, I, I don't know. I don't know a ton about those games. I've never played them, but definitely could be cool. I mean, From Software is an awesome developer, so I'm sure they'll make something cool. Whatever it is. Uh, the last Armored Core game was Armored Core 5, and it released in 2012. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> Who developed that? That wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it was on PS3. Armored Core 2 was in 2003. It was in 2002. Okay. Uh, and they had a few knock knockoffs or, you know, side stories. Yeah, I think I remember, stories. like, 2 and 3 coming out. I don't remember. Actually, uh, uh, correction, the last Armored Core game was Armored Core Verdict Day. Which released in 2013. There's a Who shit ton of these them? games. Uh, let's find out, shall we? Mm, yeah, I don't know. If from from software. software. They did right. the spinoffs too? Wow. Right. That made this news somewhat less exciting, I'm going to be honest with you. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I thought, <laughs> you know, I thought that they were first just getting their hands on it. Let's see who. <laughs> I wonder if wow, they developed Armor Core two back in two thousand and two. I mean, and, and that, I'm sorry, two thousand. So they've been they've had this franchise for since the beginning. Let's yeah. see what they can do with it, man. I mean, yeah, they totally. they've grown to be some of my favorite developers out there. Oh yeah, uh, and they 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 are good at what they do, and and hopefully they don't turn this into a Souls or a Bloodborne game, and you know, kind of keep the old tropes that made it. I guess magical. I was never really a mech guy, even though Diva and Overwatch is fucking amazing. Yeah, yes, I think they're going to make another Bloodborne. They have there was to, actually man. a quote from this interview about Miyazaki. He was saying he wouldn't put off the idea of making another Dark Souls like the game. They're done with Dark Souls, but they wouldn't make like another Bloodborne. Oh, they're style not going to make any more Dark Souls games. No, they said Dark Souls is over, yeah, but they, right. they now he's saying he might be open to doing another like spiritual successor type thing. There, I would, I'll would. i put $100 on the barrelhead right now with any one of you guys that we see another Dark Souls game come out. <laughs> like there's, that's you know, fucking just leaving money on the table. If they're talking uh, about Armor exactly. Core 5, 6, 7, 8, and you're going to tell me you're not making another Dark Souls game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Fire. Not buying it, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> Fire, you're absolutely right from a financial standpoint i mean that game's gonna make a lot of money whatever it is so right. yeah they can make sure. a mobile dark souls game and sell a million copies <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's telling the truth man i mean if a developer makes a, a game a triple a game that, that receives the kind of rave reviews critical reviews that these have yeah fucking uncharted dead yeah right uh the last of us possibly yeah right definitely coming Bloodborne definitely coming. It's one of PlayStation 4's biggest exclusives. Dark Souls, give me a break. Dark Souls kind of created its own genre. You think that they're not going to make more of that? Give me a break. They they might hand it over to someone else to develop, but there's no way in hell. It's like saying there won't be another Red Dead Redemption or we're done with Grand Theft Auto 5 or Grand Theft Auto. Get yeah, out of here. That's They'll idiotic. You're right. Happen. Yeah. It's no, too much money. There are too many fans out there. There are people who still play these games today who still have uh, just love and, and admiration in their heart for what these these developers have created. There's no way that this would ever not happen again. There's no way. 100%, man. I mean, GTA Five is still so popular, and it's been out three years now. Like, it's and huge. I, re- I refuse to play it. I bought it for my sons. I refuse to play it. I just oh. can't do it anymore. You know, I remember when Grand Theft Auto was just simple. Now it's just, I it's like a whole fucking new world. I can't do it anymore. I you still know? love it, so top, stop talking shit. When I was 14, I loved things too, Robbie. <laughs> I, I think, you know what, I, I, I think I like <laughs> fell out of that love, the love with that series after um, San Andreas. Oh, uh, yeah. San Andreas right. was like a right time, right moment right kind of game. Whereas, you know, they greatly improved the gameplay of Grand Theft Auto. And like the, they nailed like that like the whole aesthetic with that one but none of them after that really captured me as much i i have more fun with the online stuff than i do with the stories for mm-hmm. me i would probably have to agree with you there briar uh even on psp they were released on psp and i had a lot of fun playing those older gtas on psp yeah the, the newer ones it just seems like you gotta you gotta stop your life to to live this new life and I remember when it was so much simpler, and I know people are like, man, it's better to have more to do. To me, it's just so much game, so much to do in them. It just it gets my brain scrambled. It just becomes convoluted. I know the game is a technical masterpiece, and I marvel, and everybody loves it and plays it. And my kids still do, but I've kind of I've kind of grown past it. Just the way I feel until they do the something humor, totally different. I think as we age, we age out of the humor that is in those Grand Theft Auto games. The dick bag humor, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know what you mean. They say they throw nigger around, like, all the damn time. It's, it's kind of funny, though. I find it pretty Robbie, funny. Robbie, my nigger, what'd you say? <laughs> What's up, nigger? How you oh, doing? Oh, no. How did this happen? <laughs> it's pretty funny. I don't know. But Is that yeah. it for news? Let's move on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, the Do you want to keep bit... talking about him, my nigger? Look, that's the last thing we're going to do prior, okay? We're done. It's my Caucasian friends. Listen. We're currently looking for a third podcast host because Robbie got murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. 
listen, he ain't gonna get murdered. Black people don't go to Canada. It's too fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> <You're tripping. laughs> is that it for news are we done that's it man that's it alright good show man that was fun I really enjoyed it. Th- thank you guys for letting me talk about Destiny so much oh thank you for uh, elaborating <laughs> I was excited to talk about Destiny yeah when no it comes problem. to Destiny man you're like Picasso you just paint a picture with your words I, I feel like I already <laughs> had the DLC man you know if I listen to you talk I would recommend it, it Beastly it is fun and uh you know if you do end up picking it up uh, let me know so we can do a raid together because Raiden I'll is a blast. One thing that I know that I'm sure you know is when your wife says something, it's pretty much out of your hands. Yeah, that's and how I wound up with four fucking cats. <laughs> <laughs> was it three last week? Look, Kate already mentioned to me, you know, and on top of that, she's pregnant. And so every time you, you kind of give her a rebuttal, she rebuts that by saying I'm pregnant. Yeah. Look what you did to me! Hell yeah! This was all your fault. And then you look at her and you feel... You, not me. You know, I don't know if it's real or not, man, but every time she gets up, she looks at me and takes a deep breath. (laughs) When when that happens, I'm like, what do you need, babe? I'll take it. But she did mention uh, to go ahead. It's time to to get back on Destiny. So more than likely it happened this week. I'm looking forward to it, too. I'll definitely hit you up, brother. Yeah. Dude, we should totally play together, man. Oh, that'd be awesome. Definitely want to get into Forge. Argot's Forge is a lot of fun. The raid is... The, I, I like it the best so far. That raid is We shit. haven't seen a yeah. hard mode raid yet. We haven't seen the hard mode. We haven't seen challenge mode, but... What, what normal is mode was out? so fun. I'll, I'll it's usually two or raid. three weeks later. Wow. Yeah, a you month be, maybe. Something like that. Be ready for, are you going to be ready there for are, hard Oh, yeah. I'll be ready. Uh, there well, are we're going to so go for a world's first again. We're going to try for the world's first. Yeah. Oh, all right. There are amazing secrets to find too in that raid, man. Like, there's a lot of chests, and there's that whole monitor thing in the chest at the end. Has anyone figured that out with the lasers? I don't know if anybody. Oh, like, I, we've gotten six out of the seven, but I don't know about the seventh one. Yeah, I yes. think we're still figuring it out. So. And, and, and speaking of chests, have you guys ever seen a five month pregnant woman? Those chests are huge. No. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in <laughs> to Beastly Thoughts Live episode. What episode was it? 127? 126. 126. 126. I oh, know. I had 127 up the whole day. <laughs> of course we did. <laughs> the show wouldn't be right if we didn't. No. All right, guys. Anything you guys want to pimp out before we go? Uh, I drive a uh, Chrysler Town & Country. I would pimp my ride, but it's already a piece of shit. Uh, but thank you all so much for watching. If you guys want to come through my channel and see some of the latest videos, definitely a, do that. We're going to put a 40-inch TV right here. <laughs> yes! For thank shag you, carpeting Senator. all the way through. <laughs> Exhibit be hooking me up. Yeah, but, uh, of course, I have tons of videos on my channel. There will be plenty uh, more uploaded this week. I had a great time playing the games I've been playing. Super good time listening to you guys talk about Destiny. You guys have really piqued my interest. And hopefully, if you guys haven't tried it, but if you guys are Briar fans, more than likely you have, definitely give uh, this new DLC a shot because I'm going to be doing it myself. You sold it, Briar. Mm-hmm. You sold it. Good. Robbie? <laughs> All right. Robbie's got nothing to say, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my poster. <laughs> <laughs> I got a pretty poster. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this show. Thank you guys very much for hanging out, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Take care, everybody.